Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here coming at you. Well, this is the um, the junk scrap motor um, that I've been doing little parts and pieces on. So we're kind of just picking away at it and uh, sharing and showing you guys a little bit about it. So um, basically, to remove all these screws, I just walked around the around the motor with this uh, impact hammer, the impact driver. You stick it on there and you whack them. I've loosened them all up. Um, if you look at my other videos, I have one that shows you how to remove the magneto. I have another one that shows you how to get to your clutch assembly right here. Um, and how to remove, you know, remove the clutch and all that. So, basically, if you follow those videos, it'll bring you to this. Basically, a stripped-down version. Um, so, a couple of things. To remove this gear right here that's set back, there's a little tab. you got to take a screwdriver and a hammer. And you basically put it on there and you tap and you bang up the uh, the little the little um, tab. Okay, let me see if I can get you guys a little bigger here. All right, there's a little tab in there. So I already un already loosened it for the video, but it looks like this right here, and it's just it's just folded over. That's it. It's folded over, and it locks the nut so the lock can't you know back out. And then you can just pull your gear off. There's nothing you know exciting about that, and that's what your gear looks like. This gear right here drives the clutch drum. And then you have your key. There's a flywheel key in there. Right there. Half moon. And then you have, um, you're at your crankshaft seal. So you have a crankshaft seal right here. That's one you'd replace. And then your other crankshaft seal is right on the back side here. Right in back of your magneto plate. And those are your crank seals. Now, there's no gasket on the two halves. It's machined together, so there's no gasket. It's just, it's just machined together. On this part right here, there's supposed to be a little tube in here with an O-ring. You're going to want to make sure you check your O-rings and make before you reassemble them. But this right here, in back of this, is your rotary valve. So let's take a peek at that and see what that looks like. Once again, I already walked around it and um, loosened up all the bolts for the video. That way I didn't have to fight with it. But I did not take it apart. And in back of this is the rotary valve. Okay. So now we get that apart. Or off. See if we can get a uh, screwdriver in there to wedge it out. Just using a fork. Oh, there we go. The O ring is broken and it's sandwiched down. So this right here could have been an air leak. And then there's this right here. You can see that little tube? That's your oil injection tube. So here's your intake right here where your uh, fuel and air come through, right through here, where your carburetor mounts on the outside. And then you have your oil line that comes off your oil pump and over to that little tube on the other side. Where are you? There we go. On that tube right there. And that shoots your oil in. And there's the little um, jet. And that it's not that diameter of the uh, thing. It's like a little, it's crimped down. There's like a little orifice in there and it sprays it in. So that's where that is. That's your intake cover. I'm going to actually shrink you guys down a little bit more so you guys can get a better view. So give me a second here. Got you on my tripod, the trusty tripod. Okay, and then now you can see your rotary valve. That's what it looks like. It's just a disc. So when you rotate, the, see right here. Now the engine spins counterclockwise, so clockwise would be this way. So it goes this way. So from right here to right here is your intake stroke. Then it closes off the valve and pushes upward and compresses all of it in there and then it fires and starts the whole cycle over again and that's how it works so that's actually that was backwards it goes this way sorry all right so your stroke right here let's see this would be clockwise it'd be counterclockwise yeah just like that yep yeah. and you can see how, it, how it's doing it right there boom and it fires just like that bang 
So anyway, that's what the disc looks like right there. Your rotary disc. And it's got a uh, big, a big fat key right to sit and put up against something. I'm going to go in my hand. You can see how it's got all the teeth. And then there's one fat one. That's your timing mark right there. And it lines up on that bottom one. Okay, that doesn't come off until you take that ring off. don't think that comes off the crank now normally I would use a pull but this thing is this bike this machine's not going back together okay here we go right there that's got your sleeve your collar I don't know if you saw that pulled it right off the crank and then there's an o-ring in there make sure your o-ring is good because that's the internal crank seal okay and then you can remove your driver this is the driver right here that that moves your rotary valve and then right in back of that, you can see your crank bearings. Real simple. Pretty cool. So, once again, to remove the um, shifter lever, we're going to move all this stuff out of the way. I'm just pulling this motor apart. This motor is not going back together again. Just basically, I'm doing this to show you how it comes apart. So, to remove your shifter lever, okay, which is this right here. So, every time you um, step on the shifter, this whole mechanism moves and turns turns the drum, which I believe is seized up. So you push down with your finger, real simple, pull it outwards, and then the whole shaft slides out. Just like that. Really easy to do. Notice how there's really nothing strenuous about taking this thing apart so far. Here's your kickstarter spring right here. So we're going to take that spring off. We're going to rotate it and pull it out if we can. Pulling out the middle, Just rotating out the middle first. Then this it locks into a spring um, hole. So once we get that part out, use the pliers. Pops out like that and rotates out. And then it locks in on the back side, right there. Okay. And that takes care of the spring. So I'm gonna shrink you guys down a little bit. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. And then that's your kickstarter shaft right here that's all stripped out. All right. This is the little pin right here that goes on the in the hole in the crank that drives your driver. So this pin right here goes inside here. Like, I don't know if you can see this or not. There's the pin, and it goes in that groove right there to um, drive the, uh, the shaft there. So we got that off, the pin. We're going to rotate the motor to the other side and let's talk about your neutral safety light that's right here some of you guys replaced your bulbs some of you guys said hey geez you know what? i can't get my um my light to come on my light, when i put it in neutral the light doesn't come on and i'm going to show you why that is Okay. Now inside here, there's a little brass um, tab. You, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but it, it's in there. It's one little, one little. Let me see if I get a flashlight here. Hold on. No, I thought I had a flashlight handy, but I don't. Oh yeah, I do. Right here. Stand corrected. Okay. If you can see the tab right at the bottom, it's at six o'clock right now, right by my, my finger right there at the bottom. That's your contact right there. And then on the motor, here's the little tab right here. And every time that drum turns to a different gear, this rotates. So when it rotates, like that, oh, your drum doesn't move. Now it's not going to line up with the. Um, with the pin and make the ground connection and then it goes to all the different gears just like that and then can't take that off like that uh, won't let me but that tab right there breaks off 
and then you'll um, have that problem. Love that impact camera. Quick, makes quick and easy work of it. And when we pull the screw off, show you this. This is one of those fragile things. So here's the part that's important: the timing of it. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Now, so I'm gonna put some light on the situation. Right there. You see how it's got that little hole? Right there. The big hole and the little hole. There is a little pin part on the tab right here. See right there, it's sticking up. That fits into that hole and that's where your timing mark is for that. And that's pretty much it for that one. I already removed the uh, sprocket gear. You guys know how to do all that. Then there's a seal in there. Just a collar, a sleeve that rides on the uh, the seal and the bearing. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we're going to slide this stuff down and we're going to zap out some screws. Now these screws are all different size sizes. What I would do is I would make a schematic, like a picture of this, and mark down each screw and where it would go. But because I'm not doing that on this particular motor, I'm just, you know, stripping it down, I really don't care. And the other thing I would do too, a couple of tips for you. Make that schematic like I did in the clutch video to show you guys how to, how you, you want, where your screws go. And then the other thing I would do before I even took this thing apart would be to pressure wash the entire engine because there's a lot of dirt and grime and that dirt and grime is going to get into that motor and you don't want that. This is probably going to be a two part video um, just because there's so much to it but if I can do it less then I will. Do one part tonight and do another part another night. This is all different, all different length screws. And to get these out, I'm just using a regular tool, like a regular uh, screw um, bit that came with the bike. Just using in a cordless drill. Like I said, I already went around with the impact hammer and took all the, loosened them all up. A lot of screws, guys. A lot of screws. Let me show that all the back ones, all the front ones, and I got one more right in the near. Now, like you, I've never had one of these big, you know, these motors completely torn apart. Never really had to. But, um, luckily for me, all my all my Kickstarter shafts were in good shape. However, this one is not. So, we're going to take a look and see what's needed to strip this thing down and take it apart. That's a ground screw up there. It doesn't go all the way through. Looks like I have all the screws out that are necessary for disassembly. Okay. All right. So there's no gaskets on these. It's just a um, a press fit, but these press fits can be really tight together. So I'm just gonna tap on it in a few spots and uh, take a look.
never pry in between the groove, in between the crack, because that right there can cause the machine surface to uh, not seal properly. And then you'll really be in a, uh, a pickle. I'm basically just right up in the corner here is where I'm doing it from. I'll show you. Right up in, right there. I just have to screw right there. And I'm just going back and forth with it a little bit. Just kind of working it back and forth. Like I said, there's no gaskets on these. There's dowel pins and all that. And you're just going to be very gentle, very carefully. Don't, you know, don't cram it in there. Kind of, kind of work it back and forth a little bit. It's into bearings and stuff like that, so we're going to have to do that. Work it back and forth a little bit. Being careful when you're taking it apart. Okay. The bearings in there. There's the drum. Oh, you know what we gotta do? We gotta take this piece right here off. I forgot about the detent on that drum. You must remove that detent that you ain't getting it apart. This little plug up top here that does the drum. I literally forgot all about that. to get out. This is the detent for the uh, the shifter. You want to make sure you take that out. Make sure you guys see what I'm doing here. Okay. Now we should be pulling that shaft piece out as well. Because sometimes it won't come out with that end is on it. Just kind of one of those bugaboos. the shifter drum. And this drum right here controls the shifting forks. And boy is it in there. I think they use Loctite or something on this one. Boy. What a pickle to get a pot. So you get your, your retainer, you get these five pins, one for each gear. And there is a retainer right here, retainer nut, what's your say, 10 millimeter. 
So let's see if we can get that out. That out, and then and like I said, you guys have your your cell phones. So use the camera that's on your phone, or if you don't have a cell phone with the camera, get a camera, that way you can take pictures of how things go. Take a baggie, mark them. I, use, I showed you which ones I use those little freezer bags there. And those work out pretty well for me. Okay, it's gonna drop down. That's the retainer and the spring and the bolt. So what I would do is I take a picture of it just like just like that in its natural state and then where it goes. And then the, the shifter comes out. All these little pins slide out too so you don't want to lose any of those pins. Okay. Now we'll try that again see if we can separate the case a little bit more. See what's holding it. Back onto this side. Looks like it's stuck on the crankshaft. the butt end of the, the uh, hammer. Let me see if I can tap it. the crankshaft. I just used the butt of the, the butt of the hammer on the crankshaft and dropped it out. Okay. Now it's about to get real. This is the ball right here that goes on the other end of the detent, right there. So if you're ever wondering where that big giant marble goes, that big giant ball, that's where it goes. Okay, so now we'll go look right here, and you can see. One second. Okay, now you can see your transmission. Let me see if I need my light to show you a little bit better. Okay, so now you have your five gears on this one and on this one. This is your shifting drum right here. This changes and moves moves the arms. There we go. So here's the drum. You can see it moving the gears in and out. And that's the shifter. Now, the drum, these, these, um, these are called forks. They ride on these little pins, and these pins fit into grooves right on your uh, shifter drum. Pretty cool. Real basic, real simple.
Thing is so worn into it. That's the shifter drum right there. And that right there is what your transmission looks like. And then this gear right here on the outside, this one on the very end, this one drives your oil pump for your automatic oiler. Let me see how it's all. We're gonna do a whole thing on transmission, but this is actually a good transmission. See these little square, these little squares? Those are called dogs. Okay. And if you don't use your clutch and you grind your gears, these edges, these nice crisp sharp edges will become worn off, will become rounded. And when they do, your transmission will slip in and out of gear. That's what causes that. A lot of people don't realize that. So that, my friends, is how a, uh, you can see transmission gears slipping back and forth. Nice positive mesh. And that's how that is. Okay. So I figured I'd show you a transmission in its current state. I feel like I'm a dissecting doctor here. Okay, so we get that. Top here. Pretty cool. And that's the uh, inside of the case. Now, there's a ball bearing. Okay, just dropped. The ball bearing goes inside the brass fitting. On the other side of brass fitting is a little plug on this one, but sometimes there's a screw there. That's for your shaft play. Okay, if your gears aren't quite meshing properly, it would probably be that uh, that setting. It's a factory setting, you know, factory done, and uh, that's how that is. Not sure what this piece of, oh, it's for, it's for your shifter. It's for your starter right there. That's for your starter where the thing lands on. So when you uh, you stop her. This is your stopper for your Kickstarter. That's supposed to be tight. It's supposed to be in there tight. I know when you kickstart it and it kickstart stops, that's the stop for your Kickstarter right there. So if you have a Kickstarter that goes all the way around, that's probably the part that's not working properly. Okay. Then we have this gear right here that's inside the bearing. You see that one right there? That one rides on that outside gear I showed you that drives your oil pump. Now here's something you guys probably didn't know about these. There is a gear that you can put on here, on the other end of your um, shaft for your uh, oiler. And then this little tube just goes upright where that, where that rubber plug is. That's where your tachometer drive would go. So if you wanted to use a mechanical two gauge um, tachometer like you would find in like your KE 175s or your 125s, you can use that gear on here with the shaft and it's got a little worm gear and it rides on it right in here and you'll be able to use a mechanical tachometer. Pretty cool. And then the part that I wanted to show you is that's how you get to your Kickstarter shaft. So let me put this back together in its natural state. I think the spring is broken missing. Nope, it's in there. Okay. Cool. All right, so let me show you guys how your kickstart works. So basically, it's on free, you know, free, you know, free spin. Okay, I gotta put it back together again. Hold on. So when you step on your kickstarter, it grabs the dog, grabs it up here, and then turns the whole thing. And then this piece right here, okay, when it comes when it comes all the way around to where it's gonna hit. It hits that stop right there. So that dog piece right here rests on the stop when you're fully kicked. And that's pretty much how it works. It, it, it slips around it when the engine starts. And when, it, when you need to start it, it ratchets up. So it's like a ratchet. Basically the same thing you'd find in a regular standard ratchet. 
just that these have reverse. This right here is your spring keeper, your uh, bearing keeper. So you undo that right there and you can press out the bearings. This bearing presses out the other way. So this one comes into the case. This one gets pressed out of the case. We don't care about that though. We're not going to do that. Here's your crankshaft bearing right here. If you want to replace your crankshaft bearings. Right there. That crankshaft is in there. Probably going to need to be pulled out. I don't want to hammer on. I'm using my the butt end of the, uh, what do you call it there? The butt end of the hammer. But it seems to be stuck into the bearing. So that ain't going to come out. Not coming out. Might be moving a little bit, but I don't I don't see it moving. But anyway, that's how you get the crankshaft out. You pull it, get a puller and pull it out. Which I probably will do. Actually, let me try one more thing. Let's see if I can put a nut on it and then tap on it. Oh yeah, they ain't coming off. That is not coming out of that crank. Really, really book it up. Never, ever, ever bang on a crankshaft threads. Because you can screw them up. And once you screw them up, it's very hard to fix. However, it can be done. And that right there, those four screws, is how you get the inner bearing out. But that, my friends, let's see if we can squint it back down, move it back a little bit. That is the crankshaft for the KD100. And you can see the pin right there. So they would remove the bearing, press out the pin. It would break up the two halves. There's a thrust washer on each side of the crank. And then you get your connecting rod. And then that's pretty much it. It's your pin right there. So, um, this is our dissection of the, um, the case. And now what I'll do with this, with this case is I'm going to make a template and use it to um, make a, a stand. I'm going to make a, an engine stand. So when I'm working on these things in the near future, I have a stand I can, uh, what do you call it there? I can put it on. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the nuts and bolts of a, um, a Kawasaki KE engine. This is a, a, a dead engine. So I didn't mind any destroying anything. Um, it still has a lot of good parts on it. Uh, it has a lot of good bearings. It has a lot of good uh, brackets and pieces. And you never know what you're going to need. So, brass bushings and all kinds of doodads. So, that's pretty much it for me and what I have. I just think i go over. So, basically tonight, we went over the neutral safety light. We went over how to take out the, um, what do you call it there, the kickstarter. And uh, the crankshaft seals we covered in this, like which way did you know, which way they come out? Um, what do you call it there? I showed you guys the transmission in case you're wondering, ever wondering what's inside of a KE100 motor. Um, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. So um, I hope you guys find this informational, inspirational, and you don't have to tear apart your own bike to find out what's inside of it. This is it. And remember, pressure wash them before you take them apart. That's your first step. Second step, make a schematic of where you're going to put the bolts. Basically, a schematic, for those who don't know what a schematic is, it's basically a diagram of the bolts. Basically, you'd be tracing a gasket. In this case, this doesn't have a gasket. This is a machine surface. And they use like a light silicone gasket um, to put the case together. And... Also want to talk to you guys, there's a big misconception guys. 
a big misconception. I'm going to hammer that out right now for you guys. Okay. On the motor, on the front side of the motor, it has a plug up top. Okay. On the very top. Uh, that's the, where is it? Uh, it's on the side cover. It's on the clutch cover. Sorry. On the clutch cover, it has a, a plug up top, a black plug, and it says oil. And then down bottom on that same cover, it says oil level. And then people hear oil injection and they've been putting straight gas in their engine. I want to show you guys this. Perfect example of this right here. Okay, actually I'm going to move you back a little bit and raise you up. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Because you guys need to see this. The oil is only for the transmission and clutch. That's it. The engine oil, this the oil that you put in there, the 10W40, does not lubricate the crankshaft at all. So, I don't know if you can see that now. Here we go, right here. Okay, the crankshaft that sits right in here is completely sealed all the way around. Okay, it has no contact at all whatsoever with the transmission gear, with the transmission oil. Okay, you have to put two stroke oil in the reservoir on the oil injections. If you take your oil injection off and you block it, then you simply mix your oil and fuel together in the main tank and then plug up the uh, little, um, what do you call it, the, the oiler, the automatic oil tube, you want this. I have never had a problem with these automatic oilers except for the fact that they sometimes over oil. They do not under oil, they over oil. So if that's their only fault, I'll take it. Um, I have never lost a motor due to a bad oiler. Um, I have flooded out an engine because of a bad oiler, but never, ever, 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 ever lost an engine because of a, a bad oiler. And that goes for Kawasaki, Honda, and Suzuki. And I've never ran a Yamaha with it. So you can see right here at the crankshaft crankcase okay it's completely sealed from top to bottom with absolutely positively no oil from the transmission okay I just wanted to share that with you guys so you guys could see it understand it and know it and that is pretty much all I have for tonight for the Kawasaki KE100 this covers the Kawasaki KM100 the KD100, the KD80, the MC190, the MC100, it just covers the, um, what do you call it, trail boss, except for the 10-speed. Um, I say that, but the transmission's the same, just that the output shaft is different and it goes into a gear reduction box, a splitter box. So there's not 10 gears in there. You get your regular standard, you know, well, there's, there's 10 gears in there, high and lows, but um, in your 10-speed transmission, you still have the same same gear ratio, same same gearbox. And everything is the same as in here. All the um, the 10 speed part is on the side cover where the chain is. So that's what gives you 10 speed. And that is pretty much it guys. That's all I have for you. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, um, by all means send them my way. This is what's inside the KE100 motor. Um, this is how you would get to your, your Kickstarter shaft. This is how you would change your crankshaft seals. This is how you would get to your, um, what do you call it, rotary valve for modification. This is how, or just replacement. Um, this is how you would get your crankshaft out, fix any um, gears that are slipping, you know, that are um, jumping out of gear. And this is, um, what do you call it, let me make sure I got this right, Kickstarter. Um, this is how you would get to your neutral safety light, kickstarter, crankshaft seals, I covered a lot in this video, and transmission uh, jumping out of gears, basically, um, I want to just touch on that real quick, I'll grab two gears here, okay, these two gears interlock right here, and then they drive, so they, they lock and drive, and you can see right here where they, where they have enough room to engage, and then they drive, all right. These are called dogs, and they fit into these grooves right here, 
and as long as they're not rounded off on the edges they should be nice square cut gears which they are same with these if they're rounded off that means the person wasn't shifting properly and it would cause the uh, thing to with the round gear to jump off the dog so it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't interlock properly and you get your shaft right here with another ro rotating gear and this basically just keys in like this and it shifts into that gear see now it's driving this one right here now it's whole, turn the whole shaft and then when it slips up now that gear is back in neutral and now it's driving this gear They just slide right on the shaft, and that's pretty much it. And then this gear that's built onto it is the main gear, and this is your um, this is where your clutch would be, all right, on the driven shaft. This transmission is actually in very, very good condition. These right here are the shifting. Um, this is a shifting fork, and it actually rotates and slides in between these two gears. So when you when you're um, shifting on the drum with your with your foot, you're actually moving. You're moving the gear around. You're moving it between between to and fro. So every time you change the gear with your shifter, you're rotating this this here drum. This drum everything fits into like a key, and when it rotates around, you'll see it goes into a uh, it moves over. So right there, it moved over, and that's what it does. It shifts. It shifts. It shifts gear. Moves over that way, or moves up over that way, and that's how your shifting forks go. Real simple, a real basic, simple system. So, now that's all I have for you guys. So, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you have any questions or comments. Um, we'll probably do a, a transmission video uh, at a later date, but. Um, I will do one on that, how it works and all that. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe.